Okay, in the last video, what we did is we talked about um, taking a car around a turn that had no banking, it was just a level road, and we're just going to use friction to hold us to the road. But that's not reasonable because roads typically have banked turns. Okay, and so what we have is, so let's assume no friction, just banking. Okay, so now this is really, really hard for me to draw. You have to imagine that, you know, kind of the, the road is sort of banked and curving around, and we're just going to look at a slice of that. And so here's our car like this, looked at from behind, and there's a force due to gravity on that road, on that. And now we eventually want to end up going this way, not down like this. We don't want to end up with the force going that way. We want the force to be going right to the center of the turn. So we want force centripetal to be that way. And then we have force normal is that way. If that's theta, that's theta. And so then we're going to just, that's going to be our diagram, that's going to be a right angle, that's going to be a right angle. Before, in our previous diagrams, force gravity was the hypotenuse. In this diagram, force normal is going to be the hypotenuse. And so we're going to have this relationship where um, force gravity, where force centripetal divided by force gravity is going to be equal to tangent theta. Okay. So now, if we figured out that we had, um, so then we can also just sort of uh, mv squared over r divided by mg is equal to tan theta. So we can sort of put these two together and we can come up with tangent theta is equal to v squared over rg. Okay, so let's assume that we have, um, we've got a road and speed limit is 50 miles per hour and that translates into figure it out on your calculator please call it uh, we'll, we'll round it up 23 meters per second and let's say the radius of turn that we want to achieve is going to be 200 meters. Well that means that theta equals the tan inverse of 23 squared divided by 200 meters. I should put some units on that. twenty three meters per second squared divided by two hundred meters divided by nine point eight one so I sh go shift tangent twenty three squared divided by two hundred divided by nine point eight one then I'm going to end up with fifteen degrees so if I want to have 
a turn that has a radius of 200 meters and people are going on that at 50 miles per hour I'm going to want it to have a banking of 15 degrees if there, we're going to assume there's no friction so this would be on a really really icy day okay so now the roads that you drive on as you go through towns are not going to really have this much of an extreme banking but one of the secret reasons why it's better to drive on the interstate during really really bad weather is because the interstates have much much more banking than sort of regular secondary roads do and so if you have that banking it doesn't matter whether it's ice or dry pavement or whatever you can drive that turn at 50 miles an hour and, and of course on the speed limit for the interstates is 65 miles an hour so that they would probably have even a little bit more banking but this is banking handling everything in the next video I think I'm going to talk about suppose well I shouldn't bring it up but I will and the question is if you have the level row if you've got dry pavement and so you've got good tires dry pavement and uh, a radius of 200 meter turn banked at 15 degrees how fast can you go on that turn you putting them all together